Hi everyone, so welcome to the first video of the year. I'm hoping it should be a nice, simple, straightforward one. Which is good for me, but it's probably not as good for you, sat watching at home. So what we have here is a, a roto tilt attachment off a digger. So that goes on where your bucket would normally go on. And there's a bit missing on here that these rams join onto and then obviously go onto them pins there. So then it allows you to tilt your bucket in the other axis for like landscaping and whatnot. So you can, yeah, so you can tilt the whole lot backwards or forwards as well as that way. So what the problem is, is one of these grease pipes has burst or snapped or broken, whatever, and the operator hasn't realized. So they've been greasing it, but not realizing that the grease hasn't actually been getting in to the bush so you can see that bush has worn all of this side away because it's worn into the, the metal you can't just put a new bush in because there's nothing to support the bush and then it just breaks the bush out or yeah it needs to have full support all the way around so the top one's all right it just needs a new bush in there but i don't need to line bar that so yeah that one is line boring and then i can use my bar welder build it back up and then line bar it back out to size again and then just put a new bush in. So it's going to be a bit awkward to work on because it's a bit of a funny shape and it's still got the rams on. So what I'm going to do, well I want it sat the other way up so that hole is at the top on my bench. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to weld some legs and feet onto it. The reason why I want it sat like vertical rather than horizontal is because it'd be easier to bar weld round that way than it will be welding up and round and down. If you knew what you were doing a bit more with bar welding, it wouldn't be a problem. But for me, well, this will be the first proper job that I've done with it. So it'd just be easier if I can have it sat the right way up and just weld it. So that's that sat on the bench, nice and solid at that, clamped on there, 
legs are welded on so i've got plenty of space under there to put a bearing on for the line boring and then this top one is the one that needs welding so i'll knock them bushes out now see how badly worn the hole is and then i do have these already made that that bit there is 70 mil so they should fit in there and i can use them to line up the the bar hopefully So I've got that top bush out and it's not too bad, you can, it does need doing, you can see daylight through it but it's it's hardly worn into it. So, yeah, it's uh, caught it sort of, well not quite in time but. So I've had a bit of a go at knocking that out but obviously it's going to be in there pretty tight so I could do with a hollow jack, it would be handy for, for stuff like this but I haven't got one so got that. I'll sit that in there like that and then I'll put a bottle jack between there and there and then should just press out. So that's that bush out, so I can put these in now. To uh, It's a bit bird on the top, so I'll put that one in from the bottom. And then one in the top and then put the bar through.
Right, so that's all set up now. Bearings are welded on. That slides up and down nice. So, put the tool in that hole that's in there, and then we'll cut. We'll just take one cut out, then we take a millimetre out, and then put the bar welder on and fill it back in again. So that's cut out back to being round again. It measures about 72.8 millimetres. Final final size or finished size wants to be 70 yeah, 70 millimetres. So that gives us a nice depth of weld to put back in. So I'll take this back off again now, take the bar out and then mount the bar welder on. I lift it off with the forklift. I lifted it on with the forklift, it's just it's too heavy to be lifting to that height by hand.
Right, so we're all set up at that. Got the bar welder on. Got our set up in the hole. I think I've got it in the right place to start. I've got a damp towel over there to stop any sparks getting on any oily stuff. And I've got that rigged up onto my welder. I'll set it going once it's been round a few times. I'll clamp that plate onto the bottom because last time it was sort of acting like a chimney and drawing all the gas out once it got up to the top. So if I clamp that on it, hopefully it might stop that. Yeah, we'll give it a go. Fingers crossed it should go. Should go all right. So I had a little bit of an issue. I think I had the uh, the gas shroud too close and it touched and uh, like arced across and then when that came off, obviously it was getting no gas coverage. So I put a fresh one on instead of that one, moved it away a little bit. And I think I'll just die grind that out and start again from around here somewhere. It has gone all right, looks like it's done a nice job. Right, so back to the beginning again now. It was it was just bubbling like hell all the way around. So what I've done is I've cut it back out, put line bar back on, cut it all back out. But it, where it was bubbling was where the crossover is between these two bits. So whether it's got grease around there and whether it was boiling the grease out or whether it was poor gas, poor gas coverage, I'm not sure. What we'll maybe do now is warm this lot up and if there is any grease in there, it'll boil it out. That might help. Right, here we go again. Hopefully, we'll do a better job this time. Right, this is really starting to piss me off a bit now. Still, welding like that. I can't understand what I'm doing wrong. 
so I've got the gas flow when I I've disconnected the wire feed on there and I pull the trigger and I can feel gas coming out I've tried the gas turned right up I've turned it tried it right down so we're on 20 litres a minute at the moment I've tried it right up to 40 tried it down to 15 that doesn't seem to make any difference the wire is clean in there there's no rust on the wire it just doesn't make sense why it's welding like that So I've had to stop again because it's it's not doing too bad and it's getting further up to the top. It's still it's terrible at the bottom. I think the uh, the shroud is just not giving it enough gas coverage, even if you turn the gas right up. What I'm going to do is take that shorter tip out, someone shorten that tip, put a normal one in, and then see if this gas shroud will go over it. And that might give me some better gas coverage whether that'll fit i don't think that's meant for it but i'm hoping it might fit so hopefully that should work better put a longer tip in and then a different shroud that should have more coverage with the other one these old type ones but they haven't there's a, like a big open space at the top where it, if all the gas is maybe coming out through there i don't know but See if that makes a difference. Right, so that worked much, much better. I think because it's a crap at the bottom, I think what I'll do is I'll cut it out again, start afresh again third time lucky but yeah I think that was a bother was the was the uh, shroud So that's cut back out now, we should be below the depth of where there was any crappy welds before, apart from maybe that bit there. But yeah, change over again, put the bar welder back on. Right, here we go again, wish me luck.
it's just done that. I'm real pleased with that. It's gone exactly how it should have done the first time. At least I know now that it was the the shroud that was wrong. But yeah, that's done that bang on. So I think I'll have to do another pass because it's it's not built up enough to get it back to size. So I'll clean that up and then do another pass up through it. I'll just show you what it looks like in case I ruin it doing the second pass. Well, that's what the first pass looks like after I've cleaned it up. And here we go for the second pass. So that's the second run done. That's bang on again, apart from that little bit there where they, I think the shroud got stuck. For this, it was in the same place for a second or two, but I dag ran that bit off. So yeah, that's ready to machine down now. What I might have to do is just build a little bit up around the bottom by hand because with it pointing at an angle, it sort of it nearly misses the first run. You see, sort of around there. It's, not too bad, but yeah, I might just have to put a bit in round there. We'll strip it off now for the final time. I'm getting sick of lifting it on and off. So we'll put the bearing mount back on for the line borer and bore it through. I don't know where, whether you'll have realised, but oh, you might have seen in the other video that I did. I made this space for the uh, line for the bar welder to bolt on to the same place that the, the bearings do. So I can take one off and put the other one on and then put this back on. It's like a precision fit around there. So that'll be on the same place when I put it back on again. Originally that was on a magnet. So yeah, that just fits into that hub there. Like that, and then just bolt it on. 
Right, so lifted that back on. You've already seen me do that, so I didn't record that. So we'll put the tool in now. So we want the tool, as long as it's sticking out less than 15 mil to start with. So we go with 13, I think. Try that. Sixty-seven point seven six. Seventy. Right, so I'm just going to switch to one of these inserts. I don't think they're really meant for steel, but I spoke to a few people that recommended one of them. So I'll have a go, see what that's like. I've used them before, but I've sort of been too aggressive on it. I'm going to take some real fine cuts with it. Oh, reasonably fine. So that's the second cut done. Got one more cut to do now. So that measures 69.17. Now I'm 70, so. So that's 80, well, 0.83 of a mil that I need to take out. So half of that. So I need to move the tool out 4.15, or 
that's the final cut done. We're taking a little bit too much out to start with. I always like to stop and check on the final cut. We were like 70.15. And we want to be 70, so I, I knocked a bit off it. And now when you measure it, it measures 70.01. So we should be bang on at that. So I think we'll make that do. We'll take everything in bits again now. Look at all my springs. So it's a good job I did st stop and check the measurement because that bush fits loosely into the first bit. If I'd have done the hole all the way through at that size, it'd have been too slack. So yeah, it was definitely worth checking. Anyway, because that bit's proud, um, that bit won't be there anymore once I've ground that down. So that's what the finished hole looks like. There's a little bit there, and I maybe should have done a little bit more at the bottom by hand. But by the time I've cleaned that up as well, because that's proud, there won't be so much of that left. So that's that all done. I've just been round it with a chamfering tool and chamfered it at the top and on the bottom. So there's a little bit there, a little bit there, and that bit there. But other than that, it's bang on. Please with that. So last job now is to press these bushes in. So we use a big bottle jack again. Press that one in from the bottom and then obviously press that one in from the top. Right, so that's both of them pressed in. Sit a little bit proud for some reason, but anyway, they're in. I haven't got a pin to try, but maybe we should be right at that. So there's still that bearing to take off, but I'll take that off when I take these legs off. But I don't want to take the legs off yet because this ram needs a bit of attention. So I'll have to make a new end for the ram. But I haven't got a tool for cutting an internal circlip groove, so I can't do that at the moment. I've also noticed that the rod is loose in the cylinder, which you said it shouldn't have been. So yeah, that's that's it for today, all I can get done at the moment. So I could have edited out the bit with the bar welder and he'd have been none the wiser, but I try and make the videos as honest to the real repair as what I can, so that's why I left it in. It probably would have been quicker to weld it by hand after the first time it went wrong, but then next time I used it, I'd have still have had the same problem, so it's worth spending a bit of time 
getting it sorted out and knowing what I was doing wrong and getting it to go properly. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Please do consider liking and subscribing if you haven't already. Um, yeah, and I'll see you next time.